For years I've led hikes out here at Red Rock Canyon and I've been asked a lot of interesting questions, but the one question I've been asked more than any other, what about rattlesnakes? It's understandable. Of all the things you might encounter in the desert, it's the rattlesnake we fear most. The fear is primal. No stories are necessary. No first-hand accounts are required. The moment you hear the sound, you know it's a harbinger of danger. But is the fear valid? So the toxicity of the venom of the different rattlesnake species varies. So um, even if you are bitten, it certainly does not mean death. And only one-tenth of one percent of all rattlesnake bites result in any sort of fatality. So if the number of people who die from rattlesnake bites is minuscule, where does the fear originate? Perhaps it's a reaction to their physical appearance. Unblinking eyes that stare menacingly into your soul. A tongue that flicks out at you with an almost hypnotic cadence. A triangular head. There's nothing warm and fuzzy about rattlesnakes. But are these traits manifestations of evil or simply adaptations that allow the rattlesnake to survive in the desert? The unblinking eye as it appears is because they don't have eyelids so they never close their eyes. This gives the appearance to people and predators that the snake is always awake when in fact it might it might be asleep with its eyes open. Uh, the flicking tongue is another adaptation. Uh, the snakes flick their tongue to, to literally taste the air to try to see if they can pick up the scent of, of any prey items that might be nearby. The shape of the head is unique in that it's triangular shaped and it accommodates the venom glands and it also accommodates rather unique jaws that can actually unhinge to about 180 degrees uh, so that they can swallow their prey whole. So all of these adaptations that make up part of their head uh, give them a very unique and almost menacing appearance. Upon close inspection, you'll find one other adaptation on the rattlesnake's head, a pit. Rattlesnakes are, are part of the pit viper family and that pit, which is located between the eye and the mouth on the snake, is a uh, a thermal receptor actually, it helps them detect very slight changes in temperature which might indicate that a prey item is nearby. Combining the heat sensor with its ability to taste the air equips the rattlesnake with nature's version of night goggles. This makes it a formidable nocturnal predator. However, unless hunting or cornered, rattlesnakes are rarely aggressive. Absolutely. In fact, rattlesnakes are actually uh, very docile for the most part. You may be walking down a trail and see one curled up underneath a bush. It's just seeking shade. It may not be rattling or, or you may not even see it and you'll walk right by it and never know that you passed within feet of a rattlesnake. Well, now that you have a better understanding of rattlesnake behavior, you can adopt some behavior of your own. First of all, no matter what you see those so-called experts do on television, never pick up a rattlesnake. Leave rattlesnakes alone and they'll leave you alone. Also, you now know that on a hot day, a rattlesnake will seek shade, and that includes crevices, so watch where you put your hands. And finally, and I know we say this over and over again, but stay on established roads and trails. However, if you find yourself off trail, make sure you watch your step. Meet Andy. He's from Switzerland. They don't have rattlesnakes in Switzerland, so Andy doesn't know the dangers of hiking off trail in rattlesnake country. This is a western diamondback. He doesn't know Andy, at least not yet. Andy is warm-blooded, so hiking on a hot summer day isn't problematic. The western diamondback, however, is cold-blooded, so he has to seek the shade of this bush. Unfortunately, this bush happens to be right in Andy's path. Because the diamondback feels secure hidden in the bush, he doesn't signal out a warning to Andy. At least, not until it's almost too late. Andy got lucky this time, but by understanding rattlesnake behavior, you can avoid this classic case of unprovoked snake bite. If you run across a rattlesnake on the trail, don't panic. Rattlesnakes only strike as a defensive measure, and their optimum striking distance is a lot shorter than you'd think. For example, hidden behind this bush, coiled and ready to strike, is a rattlesnake. Am I afraid? No. Why? Well, mostly because it's a stuffed animal. But even if this snake were real, I still wouldn't panic. 
You see, at best, a rattlesnake can only lunge about half of its total body length. Now, according to that calculation, a four-foot snake, which is about the largest you'll find here in Clark County, can only strike, say, within two feet. Now, that's if it's coiled and on level ground. If it's stretched out across the trail, the best it can do is just turn its head. Had Andy known this, he could have simply skirted any place where a rattlesnake could hide by, say, two feet, and he'd have been fine and he could have further minimized his exposure by wearing sturdy leather boots and baggy pants. The leather boots afford some protection against the rattlesnake's fangs, and the baggy pants might cause the snake to misjudge its strike. But even with all of the proper precautions, there's still an infinitesimal chance you could get bitten. So what do you do in the event of a snake bite? There's a couple really important, simple things they need to do and remember. The first is to stay calm or keep the victim calm. If you're excited, if you're, you're nervous, it's going to increase the blood flow. It's going to cause the venom to spread more quickly through your body. Second thing you need to do, immobilize the victim. Try to keep the bite below the heart level. Just keep them calm, keep them immobile, um, reassure them. The third thing you want to do, if, t if time's possible and if you can do it safely, is to try to identify the snake. It helps um, the medical professionals determine uh, what course of treatment to take. Um, the next thing you need to do is monitor the victim. Just always, always be monitoring the victim, watching for any unusual symptoms or signs. Um, keep them talking, talk to them, keep them calm, reassure them. And the last and most important thing is get them to, medical, uh, to a medical center uh, as quick as possible. Do not ever assume that a rattlesnake strike may have been a dry strike where there's no venom involved. Always, always seek medical attention, and that includes for pets as well. Nothing takes the place of these five responses to a rattlesnake bite. All other reactions are at best ineffective, and in the case of some treatments, like ice packs and tourniquets, they may actually cause more harm than good. Commercial snake bite kits are equally ineffective. Whether you encounter a rattlesnake, a gopher snake, or any other reptile here in Clark County, your reaction should always be the same. Respect, not fear. These animals aren't out to get you. They're just simply another strand in the web of life.